Hello and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan, and this is sort of deja vu here, kinda. It's batch of vu oh, I don't know, I was going to think of something funny, but... Just more Batman all the time. And it's like, you know, we did, we talked Hush, the comic book. What, like two months ago, maybe by now? It wasn't something like that. What, yeah. too, it, it was long ago enough that I don't remember it as well, but it like still fresh enough that I know it wasn't that far off. You know, probably still in our 400s of episodes mm-hmm. section. But um, we finally got the Batman Hush movie, which has probably been almost, and like, you know, the last almost decade of like these DCU movies coming out. You know, Hush has been that one that people have always sort of asked for. You know, and sometimes, like, DC would send me, like, a poll and be like, yo, what do you want next, Spencer? I'm like, well, let me tell you, DC. Let me tell you, because I know that my one comment's going to outweigh everybody else's. And, beyond, you know, Hush was always definitely one, like, yes, that. I mean, I always said, like, but what I really want to see is traveling fucking heroes. <laughs> Just because that seems like the long shot. Hush seems like a shoe-in, but, um... Or not a shoe-in, but, like, it seems like one that has a good chance of getting made. Where Traveling Heroes, as important that is to DC's history, it doesn't seem like one that, like, they would do because of just... It's just such an old story, and I, it's not as hip with the kids, you know? There's no Green Lantern movie coming out. Not everybody watches Arrow. So if Green Lantern picked up, then we probably would have got a better chance of Traveling Heroes. Or who knows, maybe that would have been a live-action movie. Yeah, well, it's that kind of whether it's like, I feel like sometimes with DCU, it's like they've, they've gone, they've kind of went to like the safe route in recent times. And I almost kind of wish they were still trying to do like, because when they first started off doing those DCU movies, it felt like they were kind of balls. I mean, a lot of times they were tied into like whatever new movie was coming out or what TV show they wanted to promote and so on. But beyond that, though, I felt like they were just taking some like real ballsy choices and just being like, yeah, let's do like Justice League New Frontier. Why not? It's got a cool art style. It's the 50s. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Where I feel like nowadays they'd be like, no, 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 don't do the Justice League New Frontier. 50s doesn't sell as well as it used to. You know what I mean? Those happy days, they ain't happy anymore. (laughs) Well, see, I think they're being being ballsy in the aspect of... Well, even looking at that movie, that movie's kind of ballsy because I remember it was just on television one time and my family was there and... My mom was just flipping through channels to put something on for the kids, and she saw, oh, it's a it's a superhero cartoon. Here, kids, watch this. And then there's the beginning, and they're like, I, I didn't want to say nothing. Like, I know how this goes. I don't want to say nothing, though. And then, like, there's that part where um, I think Hal Jordan or someone sh- shoots that Russian right in the head, and there's a silhouette of blood going everywhere. Like, oh, my God, what is this? Like, all right, let's see. It's, 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 it's Batman, but um, what well, I mean, Batman's like, that, not it, yeah. it's not, like, ballsy, like, in content. I just mean, like, they... they they sort of play it safe because it seems like now it's like movies are either it's a Batman movie, it's a Justice League movie, you know, or it's something like a Teen Titans or maybe the Superman movie. But the Superman movies are mostly just Justice League movies in the first place anyways, where before they were just like picking like, let's try Green Lantern. He's got a movie coming out. He's got a cartoon show coming out. I mean, second that Green Lantern kind of came down like a crashing meteorite or like Sonic the Hedgehog falling out of space in Adventure 2. They're like, you know what? You know, Green Lantern, maybe he could be a side character. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But... Or if they wanted to give a character, if they wanted to give a character, they weren't sure would get a movie. They would get put him. They make him main character of a Just League movie, like Just League Throne of Atlantis. Like, all right, he's uh, it's more or less an Aquaman movie, but he's centered around the Justice League with Aquaman in the center. Same thing with Flashpoint, Paradox, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, they've been kind of slowly going back to just getting more experimental with it, kinda to a certain extent. Um, like you know, like Batman Death- Ninja. <laughs> well, like. Oh, I guess. Well, no, I think Batman is just a safe bet, no matter how you, yeah. no matter what crazy fucking rapping you throw it in. But uh, Death of Superman, the rise, uh, reign of the Superman, then you had Teen Titans, Judas Contract. Now, Teen Titans, I think that was sort of having a comeback, but that had a different audience than, that, that, you know, Teen Titans, I think its biggest audience is really kids who like Teen Titans Go, and then people who grew up watching the. Uh, the uh, teen the Teen Titans cartoon from the early two thousands, which I think by then by this point they're mostly in their early twenties, maybe mid twenties. Yeah, exactly. So I think, but that, it's like Teen Titans is sort of like it's still kind of I feel like writing about that safe choice, like you know what I mean. Like I think they kind of go, you know what, we could do Teen Titans, and it has a higher chance. You know, where before it's like when they tried things like, uh, you know, just I think like the Wonder Woman movie. Remember when Wonder Woman was not popular? 
Because that movie sort of came out and it did okay. Oh, yeah. The... And it was just kind of like, well, let's not try that Wonder Woman thing again. Obviously, people didn't like that. The one, well, the ne- Wonder Woman's their next one, but um, yeah, I know that's, that's looks, why I think it's funny. It's like it comes full circle, but like that other Wonder Woman movie was like amazing, and it's just like it kind of just got like put to the side. I mean, granted, this was at the time period where like animated, sort of like adult oriented movies was still not like a common thing yet. I mean, they existed, mm-hmm. but they weren't like it was still at the point where like, well, okay, Billy, what do you want? You like you like that Justice League stuff? Oh, look at here's a perfect one for you. Like you know, it's for five and below. Before we go too far into Batman, I just just mentioned the Wonder Woman thing real quick. Um, that right there, that kind of has me curious because um, it looks sort of like a quasi like remake, like an updated remake of both the cartoon we got and the movie that came out because it's about her going to the world and Steve Trevor landing on the island. Now, what I'm really hoping they do, I'm hoping that that all the stuff with Trevor landing on the island and Themyscira and all that. I'm hoping that's just a flashback. I'm hoping it's a flashback and we don't have this big buildup because I've already seen it twice by this point. And the movie, the first animated movie was really good. And I, I like the live action one. That one's good too. But the, the, the I, I think the animated one's way better in my opinion. And um, I think that, I hope it's, it doesn't become the Spider-Man thing. Like I, We know he gets bitten by the fucking spider or Bruce Wayne's parents in the alley. We know they get fucking shot. I just hope it's like, okay, quick little flashback, move forward we're jumping years later where, because, you know, because this one has a lot more villains in it. It has, uh, you can tell it's pulling cues in the movie because suddenly they're using Dr. Poison, who I never really read a lot of Wonder Woman, but Dr. Poison was never really a character I saw too prominently. And then Cheetah and then uh, Giganta and then I don't know who the other one was. Yeah, there, there was quite a few. It looked like they were really going to town on this one. And I don't think it's going to be too much of an origin, because it like even in like that kind of like trailer that they had for it, it seemed like it was kind of like, it was like an early day story, but almost like, uh, this is the best way to say it, like a year two story, you know? Yeah. Like, you're mm-hmm. past the origin part, but, but you're still like at a time before the Justice League. Like, I think that's sort of what it's supposed to be going with. And it might have one of those ones where it has like that, like, you know, minute long section where it's like, you know, who's Wonder Woman? She's from Themyscira. Steve Trevor crashed on the island. He saved her. Look at this. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, okay, now you know what it is. Let's get on with the story. I could see it being that, like, for the first, like, four to five minutes and then moving forward. Like, you get it. And it's, yeah, it she, looks like it's the she's same. She's a woman. She's got power. She's got a lasso. Come on. Like, shit, dude. You need drunk Batman to come out and explain to you who Wonder Woman is? <laughs> I mean, I know in this trailer here that, like, they're talking about that most people don't know who Wonder Woman is when you really ask her. But, shit, you've seen a fucking movie, right? <laughs> She's got a sword. She's got a thing for bondage. You can figure it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there, there is also what you call it. There is. Uh, fuck, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, her character model is also the same character model you see in this connected DC animated universe. So this is probably a quasi prequel. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. It's because it's, it's all part of that. Because you still got that interesting like Wonder Woman suit on. That's she's different still voiced by Rosario Dawson. But uh. I'm assuming that's Rosario Dawson. It sounded like No, it her. still is. It, she, okay. she was in the trailer. Did you watch that trailer thing on there that they had? Here's the thing. Truth time. I, unfortunately, was not able to go out and buy it because I've had a busy week. I have not... And there's no... It's so like, busy, place. you hear people outside like, Come on, Ryan, fucking go out and buy it. Oh, that's horse. Outside Lands. I'm just a few blocks away from Outside Lands in San Francisco, and you get to hear... Uh, yeah. Hear it sound just, of that bullshit. Oh, of course it stops as soon as I open the window. But that was like, yeah, like my my last night was like they had fucking Bush playing outside and it was like loud as all can be. Just Bush, where? Oh, were you? Was Bush playing at uh, Black Oak Casino? Yeah, but you could just hear it from my house pretty much. So like, you could literally go sit out Bush on the back. Bush was playing at Black Oak. Well, I guess I guess Snoop Dogg's playing at Black Oak. Then. Yeah, he... we're getting way too local for this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> but um, but yeah, this you know you got those concerts just going and so on, but um. But was, did, so did just you, there's that one quote, like, there's that one quote in, in that one Bush song, like, find my asshole, brother! I don't remember the rest of the song, but I remember that part. But, yeah. So, so yeah, there, there was that. It's always kind of interesting, but, um... But you, so but, um, you got yeah, it digitally, is what you said? I just rented it. I, I, I rented it. I have every intention. It was one of those things, more than likely, I'll usually go buy these movies right when they come out, you know, just because I trust them that much. But just because I wasn't near a place where I can go and buy a physical copy this week, and I didn't really can fit into my schedule, unfortunately, I just like you know, fuck, I'm just gonna rent it. I'll buy it later. And this is definitely a go out and buy the movie. 
So I guess moving forward, we're going to talk well, about the movie. This, we're going to talk about here's the it. one thing you did miss out though, since like wait, I mean you'll you'll forget it when you get on DVD, dude. They have this Sergeant Rock fucking short. Because remember we mentioned this on like one of the last oh. Batman ones we did. We're like, remember when they used to give us little shorts, you know, with the movies? You know, you got like the Catwoman one, or you got like the Green Arrow and the um, what's his name? Uh, Jonah Hex. Yeah, there's the Jonah Hex one, and then uh, I was trying to think of what. Um, Spectre, the, the Green Spectre. Spectre. The Green Spectre. Well, dude, they put a Sergeant Rock one in this one, and it's like 16 or 17 minutes long, so it's almost like an episode, in a sense. Just, just That's a, pretty awesome. Just a tad bit short, but it's um, it's directed by um, God, what's his name? A Batman animated series. Drawing a blank right now. All of a sudden. Bruce Tim. Yeah, Bruce Tim directs it, dude, and it's it's so sick. It's like you know, of course, you know. World War Two or whatever, Sergeant Rock's out there fighting with his troops and so on. Then like a big old explosion happens, and he wakes up in like the infirmary. But they like they pair him with like you got a new team, and then his new team turns out to be like the Frankenstein monster, werewolf, and um, like Nosferatu. And I'm like, fucking sold. That's awesome. It's so badass. And then it just goes on to being like a really sweet thing. But I was like, that right there was almost like that thing was so cool. I'm like, I want the hour and a half version of this. Can we get this now? I mean, I know Sergeant Rock is like. You know when, like, there's characters out there, you know, you think Green Lantern's hard to sell. Wait till you got Sergeant Rock. <laughs> Wait till you get the question. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? There's some characters out there that, you know, sadly almost... Vigilante. Wish, yeah, never gonna get their own, like, each thing. But it was just cool to see that short kind of come back, and I thought that was just neat. Because I remember when I picked up the Blu-ray, I just looked at the cover, and I'm like, comes with a Sergeant Rock short. I'm like, really? I'm like, I'm almost more intrigued by that. I mean, don't run. I, w- I want to see Hush, but just the fact that there's a Sergeant Rock short on there, it's like, hell yeah. Well, he's one of those characters I don't really know a lot about, and he's popped in other people's books. That's the main reason I know him, is when he's popped in other people's books. I think he may have been an episode of Justice League or something when they Mm -hmm. flash back to the 40s. But, yeah, I'd be totally up for for that. I want to, yeah, definitely. that's definitely enough reason to go out and buy the movie just for that. But, um, yeah, moving forward, um, yeah, let's just talk about Batman Hush. Yeah, Batman Hush, Hush, name is Batman, and he's got a character named Hush. But you know what's the weird thing is this one? Because this is kind of like almost feels to be like the simplified version. Because you know when we talked about the comic book on the show, it's like 12 issues long. So it's a thick graphic novel. You know what I mean? It's not just your normal six issue one. So, I mean, I knew kind of like coming in, they, they were going to kind of simplify it. And granted, that is a story. I feel like it's not like Dark Knight Returns where I feel like if you cut too much out of it, you feel like you'd be missing it. Like they did it right mm-hmm. by doing it in two parts. Hush almost felt like that one that you maybe could have done in two parts as well. But instead, um, instead, they almost but, just went the the hour twenty minute verse. So it's like the real short one. You know what I mean? Just like it still works, though. I think they did something different. Here, here's the thing about some comics. Um, something like Dark Knight Returns. It feels it would feel too weird. I, I can't really explain it. But I guess since that's a standalone story and it's not really a part of the main continuity, I feel like that's one. Like let's try and keep it as tight. Is let's try and make it just the as much as the. The original as possible like i feel like watchmen if you took too much creative liberties with watchmen that'd feel weird because it's it, up to that point it was its own little single story same thing with uh dark knight returns and then you know more of dark knight returns have come out since then and hush and watchmen has since then expanded but i feel like something like batman hush which is just kind of like another part of batman history and it pulls a lot from batman history in it I feel like that is something you can get creative with and can mix around. Now, maybe not everything they did is something that I would prefer to see, but I still see all the reasons why they did it. And I still think there's a lot of good choices they make. Like, they had... I'll say this, because a big part of Batman Hush was the... Both versions was the Selina and Bruce relationship. And... I'm never, you know, I, I never dislike it whenever Batman's in a relationship, but because I, I just know how it's going to end. But it, it's not, not that I dislike it, but I just know it's going to end. So I'm like, all right, well, this would be nice. This is a nice break for him before he goes back to being all lonely and shit. But this one, it felt like it, it didn't feel like too shoehorned because it felt like it, it, the way it had like there's more gravity to it. And them getting together felt like it made more sense the way it worked out in this book, this movie rather than the book. Yeah, like, in this one, it's kind of interesting because they really just sort of take that relationship and just sort of really expand on it. Because it's sort of like, in the comic book, it's there, and it's like a big deal. You always remember it, but I think it's, it is one of those ones that's not, like, part of the overarching story or anything like that. It's just more like, yeah, that was a one-off issue fling we had, and, you know, kind of, yeah, she's still there, but, you know, I'm 
back to being Batman, searching for Hush. You know, where in this one, they really made it like, let's get together, let's, let's make it a relationship thing. Let's, you know, fight crime together. Here, come see the Bat family. There's Nightwing, and there's Alfred, and then I have a boy. Oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> forgot to tell you, <laughs> forgot to bring this up in all of our dates, but I actually have a son. Yes, he's grown up. <laughs> he's at college right now with the Teen Titans. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, you know, maybe I should. He's only 14 years old. I I know we've been together for like 20 years, but I probably should have brought this up. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you're You're you're, you're going to have to take him to school. I didn't know if if that's going to bother you, but, uh, that's that's not Alfred's job. He he specifically told me that two years ago. (laughs) He says he doesn't give a shit what he's paid for. He's not doing this. (laughs) Yeah, so, uh, yeah. uh, Well, thanks for doing it. So, uh, okay. We'll get your mop out and so on, you know. Al- old Alfie here's breaking too. his bank. Yeah, she, you know what I mean? Like, come on. Come on, Selena. You want to be part of the Bat family? This is what the Bat family does. They work. I it's sit around the computer off. all day long, you know? Just saying. I don't work. I have the fucking money. Oh, why, why would I work? What, the way I work is by punching somebody in the fucking face. Huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. What do you do when you're not stealing? Oh, yeah, art gallery. That's real fucking work. How's that panning out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, still paying off those student loans, huh? Yeah, see, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he fucking artist types. <laughs> so optimistic, so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it's like they give like the the big ex- like you know kind of storyline of like Selena, and then I think that actually kind of works well. I think that almost kind of drives sort of from like you know you had that in like the Tom King books or whatever, where like Batman got married to Catwoman. So I feel like that sort of spills in a little bit not like really the same thing as that but just kind of like well let's just make you know the Catwoman batman relationship like let's make that the you know the main focus hush yeah he could be the, he could be like kind of like what keeps the story going but he's like a background thing in this story compared to like the selena and batman thing yeah well the whole thing with uh batman and selena in this is uh in the in the comic it's they're working on this case together and eventually they just kind of hey, maybe we can be in a relationship. Cool. And then they make out at once a couple of times. And then, you know, they kind of break They kind of break it off at the end over, like, Batman not being able to trust her. He just, he just tells him, hush. He's like, why'd you say that word? Why'd you say that word? I mean, it just, it, it's, it's a commonly used word outside of the villain, you know. And this, it's more of like, okay, they're working together, but then he's also seeing her as Bruce Wayne, and then they bring, and then you kind of get to see them, like, day-to-day life, you know, like, they're fighting crime, and they have this nice montage of them, like, on a date together, things are going great, then all of a sudden, the bat signal goes off, and they're both fighting crime together, so it's like, you kind of see, all right, I see how this would work. Yeah, exactly, you know what I mean, they're like, just almost playing, like, that Beatles song, like, two of us go... Batman, Batman and Two Cat of us Woman. beating up crackheads, <laughs> fighting drug dealers. Oh, that guy's on no. PCP. Punch him in the face every day. He's like, do do. Come on, Selena, sing the words. Do do. Help with the guitar part. Do 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 do. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm breaking up with you. She's like, she's like, I, here's the thing. I've never been a Beatles fan. I like the Rolling Stones. Oh, she. Oh, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Yeah, get the fuck out. You know what I mean? Shit, Yoko Ono broke up the Rolling Stones. That's why we don't have them anymore. I hope you know that, <laughs> Selena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, actually, I think Batman would be more of a Stones guy. I, I, I think so, too. It's either there or less if Batman's got like that weird thing where he's like, you know what, uh, this is kind of my, my relaxation music that I go and I, I go deep and dark in the caves and me and the bats fucking just like, just jam out. I just sniff a line of bat poo and just <laughs> go to town listen to me. <laughs> Get, it's weird. You it's ferment an, it. I, I really like the early Beatles albums for doing that. I, you know, most people always shoot towards the later day ones. I think the early ones are fucking weird. <laughs> you just let that shit ferment then you huff it and you get high. You try it out sometime. <laughs> It also works as it also works as a is a real upper. It kinda wakes you up in the morning. Yeah, you know what I mean? Shit, you you, you wonder why they call me the Batman. It's not because I fell down a fucking well. No, that, that just that was just a shitty fucking day, let me just say that. I just like to I just like to huff bat shit out of a Tupperware container. <laughs> <laughs> no super science needed for that. Yeah. It gives me great strength, at least it feels like it does. Yeah, shit, I don't barely have to eat anymore or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, 
barely, you know, I sleep like two hours a night. <laughs> fucking awesome. Alfred said that I shouldn't try to get my own son to start huffing fucking bat shit, like, you know, that that's wrong and immoral, but... Like, let's wait till he's 15, at least. Yeah, I know. Break they'll, him in. They'll, they'll be ready to party. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, shit, I've been, I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. Day of my family's uh, funeral, fell down that bat hole, and oh, look at this. Y you ever know what's in a bat hole? Bunch of bat shit. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Why staring at me like that. <laughs> Just stop staring, stop staring, and start huffing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I got a girlfriend. It's okay. <laughs> I can do this sort of shit. I, I, I can handle both. <laughs> I got it under control. <laughs> so going forward from this, it's one of these things. Um, it's one of these things where this book, where this uh, movie, Hush, kind of comes in. Like it does this thing where it takes the basic structure and it kind of knows because. The, the way the original book goes is I mean, it was the first Batman book I ever read. So, and I was able to piece together what was going on pretty easily with no, not reading any DC books beforehand. Cause they would always get things out of the way with exposition. But I feel like that was made to be not really a reboot, but kind of like, all right, let's use this as a sampler. We got one of the biggest writers in comics at the moment, and we got the biggest artists in comics. Yeah, we just stole his ass from fucking Marvel, so. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's, put the, let's, let's get these guys working together, see what they come up with, and this will be kind of like a sampler. Because you think about it, it has not all of his villains, but a lot of his big villains, finds a good way, good way to click them in there. In the meantime, for old-time bat, bat, bat fan fans who've been reading it for a while you got new characters like hush and they're teasing the batman catwoman relationship which has been kind of an on and off thing throughout the comics yeah well you know hush has always been sort of like i almost feel like like the perfect gateway book yet it still holds up as like one of the top tier books if not even probably my favorite book almost as far as a batman one goes you know and i think it is just because that like you know it's got the characters that if you watch just the movies and maybe the animated show you would have been like okay there's joker you know there's harley quinn there's poison ivy and so on but then it's got enough like almost like learning experience that you could be like oh okay here's some other characters i might not have known of you know what i mean or here's some more in-depth kind of like takes on it and you get a brand new character to top it off too now i guess the thing with this because the the end is what i know what i've heard like criticism from people it's mainly been the end and what they do with hush and part of me kind of gets it but another part of me is like well in the context of the story it makes i i get why because Really, even reading Hush, it was pretty obvious who Hush was. It was Thomas Elliot. It, it was, even reading it the first time, it wasn't hard to narrow down. Now, granted, they give you a good, maybe it's not him when he gets killed at the opera. Mm -hmm. And like, all right, well, he's killed, so I guess it's not him. And then later you find out, oh, it was Clayface posing there. And Clayface was posing as, as uh, Jason Todd for a minute, which opened up the possibility of like, well, maybe Jason Todd's still alive. Which they eventually rode with. Mm -hmm. And then they also brought in the whole thing of of um, Two-Face. Two-Face is just kind of like in one quick shot in a montage of this. Of Two-Face becoming a good guy. So there's some things I get why they took out. Because there's maybe too much history just to like blip a, like swipe aside there. But it worked for this. Now, um, even though... I, I don't know. I got kind of mixed opinions what they do with the character hush in this. I got mixed opinions on it, but I still really like the movie, and I still totally think it makes for a good mystery. Yeah, I think overall it's still good. And I mean, like you know, they're fitting it in with like the Batman like continuational series of the DCU. So it's like <clears throat> I remember when they said that at first. I kind of went, I'm like, would it be best to make Hush just like do it kind of you know no different than Dark Knight Returns or Batman Year One or even um, Killing Joke, like where it's just its own standalone Bat story. And even though, like, they, it still kind of works. Like, I don't know, H Hush is one of those ones, like, it worked kind of, like, putting the continuation. But it is kind of one of those ones where, like, it starts off, and at first it's pretty, like, accurate to Hush. You know, it's about, like, the, you know, Sim. I mean, yeah, they, they definitely, there's none, like, the flashback scenes. And there's not, there's not, like, almost, like, the extra details. It's definitely, like, the file down, just, like, here's, like, the, like, the main points from there. And here you go. But yeah, as it kind of goes and it kind of does, because that was what I was waiting for. I'm just waiting for, like, I knew that, like, Jason Todd was not going to be in it because, one, they don't even have a Jason Todd in this universe and so on. But, like, it's almost like, 
to me, it's like, that's not going to bother me. I was like, I just wanted to see who was going to pop out instead. If it's not Jason Todd, who is it going to be? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And even when they do go, it's like, oh, it turns out to be Scarecrow in this scene here. And it's Nightwing and Catwoman fighting him instead. And even the beginning, they didn't have Huntress. They had Batgirl for a second. So yeah. There's certain characters they just flip around, and that makes sense. I kind of like that we finally got to see Burnside Batgirl for a second. She wasn't there a whole lot, but she got to be there for a minute, which was cool. Yeah, exactly, you know. I only like, too, like, the way that they sort of did Bane right off the bat, because at first, like, Batman, it's like how the movie kind of opens. It's like he's battling Bane and everything. He's like, I don't know, Bane seems kind of a little, or like Alfred says, he's like, doesn't Bane seem like kind of like a little bit more stupid than normal? Or he says something more clever than that. He but. said, he said, like, isn't Bane a little more eloquent? And you find out that, because that was another thing about, um, it opens up with him fighting Killer Croc. That's another thing they just swept around. And the whole thing with Killer Croc was, he was never that bright, but he was just being a lot more animalistic, just almost animalistic, and he was even looking more animalistic. So the whole idea of him being so, I get why they switched out Bane. Though. <laughs> it's one of those ones where Jim Lee was fucking drawing it, and then like the like three days later, he's like, "Oh fuck, I'm not drawing Spider Man anymore. Shit, <laughs> I'm not drawing the lizard. Fuck." <laughs> well, it's staying in there. I'm not going back now. Somebody walks in like, "I can't wait to see what you do with." Jim, what the fuck? Like, I can't help it. I was working at Marvel for a long time. And then Jim, these I, DC guys just literally came in with like a burlap sap and took me out in the middle of the night. Yeah, I, I just you said I woke up. At, I woke up at DC with a pen in my hand and just told to draw. Look, when, 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 look, when we said draw a croc, like, well, lizards are, could be a croc. Yeah, he could be. Here's the thing. I get, they're kind of, yeah, they're kind of rip-offs of each other. I don't know which one came first. I don't give a fuck. But here's the thing. Did you have to throw the white coat on him? Did you have to throw the fucking white coat? Well, I mean, it just helps the contrast. It's already in a really green environment. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we don't want those Marvel execs coming over here trying to sue us. It's the fucking 90s. They got no money left. They're looking for anything right now. All right, here's what you're going to do. Make his skin look more fucked up. Look, it look like it's overlapping over each other. Like there's no rhyme or reason. There's no there's no scale. Just fucking figure something out. Okay. I'll f I don't know why I'm making Jim Lee this meek and this kind of like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this gets kind of bullied into it because yeah, because Bane wasn't even in the other the other hush at all, right? No, he wasn't even in it. It yeah. opened up with him fighting Croc, and that's not even a big like. Oh, they changed this. I think I think Bane might actually be a better choice, but um. Well, I kind of like yeah, those changes. But what I was gonna say is like, I just want to say this real quick on the Bane thing, is I liked how it's like they almost gave him kind of like they made Bane sort of almost felt like a nod to sort of like Batman and Robin to kind of like explain why Bane and Batman and Robin was acting like an idiot. It was just like, oh, it's Poison Ivy. It's just she doesn't want to be too smart when he. <laughs> it's like that's what I sort of felt when I saw that. It was just like. Oh, it's almost like giving more context to Batman and Robin, like why that Bane is acting that way. And the idea that he's also a, uh, the idea that like he he's working for Poison Ivy, like he's Poison Ivy's goon. Yeah, and it's just like she just dumbs him down, you know, with you know Poison Ivy lipstick and so on, all the pheromones. And I just thought that was kind of an interesting way to go about. It. And see, like all those little changes like that, I think those are all kind of fun because in a sense, those are always those many things that like you could almost have like a handful of different characters in those kind of roles. And they all sort of work. You know what I mean? It works with Killer Croc. I think it works really well with Bane. I actually like that one quite a bit. And just even things like, yeah, like having Batgirl come in instead of Huntress, that kind of makes sense because you don't have, you know, the, the, the normal, because the thing about the DCU movies, I think they're kind of like those in between. You know what I mean? You kind of have people on like the far end that have like, they only watch the movies and that's all they know of Batman and Justice League and so on. You got people on the other far end that like, they, you know, they read everything comics and so on so they can know any back story and so on. And I feel like the DCUs are kind of about, they're like the, the bridging point between the two. Being like, hey, casual fans, come on over. It's not as fucking nerdy as I know everybody has told you your entire life. Well, that's always kind of fun to do. There are those ones that you can't really, that you probably won't be able to change anybody's minds on. But then there's like that couple of books or those couple of movies you could show someone who's never picked up a comic in their life. And remember, we talked about, he had him on our, on our show one time, my friend James. He never really liked any like action oriented animation. He was always more into, you know, just comedy animation. And I showed him Batman um, Under the Red Hood. And he was like, all right, I'll, we'll see how this goes. And I know I've said this story in the podcast before, but it's fitting because it's Batman again. It's this. And he comes in the next day and he says, he puts the movie down. I'm like, I get it. 
I get why you like the character, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, he says, you didn't tell me, you, you could have just told me Robin dies in the first two minutes and I would have probably watched the movie without any hesitation. Yeah, exactly. It's just sometimes it's like those, those little things like that. And I think that's what's made the DCU ones. I mean, granted, I think there's some of them that are a little bit more complex than like you would think if you're showing it to somebody who's totally fresh. But, Batman um, Hush ain't gonna. But not Batman Hush. Uh, Batman Ninja might scare some people off. <laughs> yeah, Batman Ninja. The Batman Ninja would scare off even hardcore Batman fans. It's like that's kind of how that movie. That movie was. I don't know what was going on in that one. Really, to tell you the truth, that that one scares off even people who are into anime. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I own it, but at the same time, it's not one I'm rushing to, oh, watch again. I I, I just wish it was more Batman Ninja, not Batman Man. Giant Gold Monkeys, Big Paper Mache Mechs. And you know, and yeah. going like going like early two thousands straight to DVD anime tie in artsy fartsy scene where Jason Todd's beating Harley Quinn and then you know goes back to being a real serious like it goes back to being a fun adventure movie after being some weird independent artsy drama for like two minutes. Yeah, exactly. Remember that part? That was, that was the weirdest thing. The animation <laughs> style changes like. It was like, it was like, we're like, because you remember like in the 90s, there was be all these, like, like, um, or more quasi, like, I say what? like, almost like the early 2000s when they, you mean the tie-in type movies that they used to release? Yeah, like, like Chronicles of Riddick, Animatrix, Van Helsing, there's more, but those ones come to mind where it's like, here's the dark, here's the tie-in, it's animated, usually anime, and then... Sometimes it'd be like a collection, like Animatrix, like an anthology. So it would be like this. You might get this really cool one, but then you get this really weird artsy one. Like, what the fuck was that? And that that Batman Ninja had that because it's like, okay, it's the cool, stylish. What you think of kind of the new anime? And the, then it goes that weird artsy style where it's almost kind of watercolorish, and like Joker starts get like. Red Hood finds Bat Joker and Harley Quinn starts beating them like you fucking assholes and Batman's like stop it they don't remember but they will like fuck it we got other things we got to we got to stop a giant gorilla somewhere and then I will beat the memories back into them and then later and then like and then it goes back to being cool animation like what the fuck happened there like somebody need a oh, okay, I'm getting off topic but you know you get the idea it's all Batman related it's all Batman yeah it's all in the Bat family keeping the Bat family anyway. now. It just it just felt it just felt like I was getting flashbacks to like 2004, 2005 to when they were starting to put out all those straight DVD tie-ins. You know, now that you mentioned the Animatrix, I really feel that that is the total start of it all. Cuz I can't yeah, really think of definitely. one, I mean there's probably something that was a tie-in at one point, but I mean, I can't think of something that before the Animatrix that was kind of like that exact like here's the tie-in, it expands on the universe. <clears throat> well, some of them do. Or you get ones like the Van Helsing one, which is really good, but it's like 15 minutes long. I feel bad for anybody who bought it, like, day one. It's only 15 minutes long? Yeah, it's so short. It's, like, one of those ones. Like, that should have been just a special feature on, like, the DVD. Like, I do not know why it was a stand, like a side piece. That may have what killed it, then, if it's only 15 minutes long. Hello? Oh, sound went out again. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, just that we weird. Those kind of weird things where it's just like, you know, I paid like a buck for the Van Helsing one. So it's like, it was definitely worth like a dollar. But I could <laughs> see like, because it is cool, but it's cool like the Sergeant Rock one. But um, <laughs> yeah, just one of those ones. Like, I just thought it was so weird because I was expecting it to be like an, at least an hour long. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or at least 45 minutes or whatever. But, um, the, but going back to um, Batman Hush right here. Um, so some of the changes they make and some of the things they do, I totally get. There's no real changes that made me go, that was fucking dumb. There are just some where, like, that's different. I don't, like, the big change, I guess, because there's some stuff, the, the, big, the big changes they make that make sense to me is having a more of an emphasis on their relationship, on um, Batman and Catwoman's. I know it's not going to end well, more than likely. But at the same time, I, I, I think it's well done. What they do is well done with it. And you kind of see, oh, that that's why it could possibly work between them. And I like that there's not all this tension between Nightwing and um, and uh, Catwoman. And it's it's not like one of those where Nightwing's like, dude, what are you doing bringing a chick around here? What if I want to strut around nude? I can't do that with her there. Yeah, you can. She's part of the Bat family now. We're all going to strut around nude together. Come on, Alfred. <laughs> Come on, lock the we'll lock on, arms Alfred. while we do it. Get, get naked, make make Nightwing feel comfortable. 
<laughs> Remember, it's just how we are. We're, we're just a family. This, you know, like the bat nudist. This is why uh, Barbara says she's not staying over at all at the bat cave, and she kind of really would rather phone most of this stuff in. But I mean, I get it. She's young. She's she just doesn't understand. I mean, shit. I go over to Gordon's house sometimes. We strut around nude. It's nothing weird about it. We just lock eyes and we don't even just say anything. We know. <laughs> yeah, we kind of get down in like a sumo stance, you know, and just sort of look at each other for like hours on end. Sometimes we talk about what's going on with that new case going on in Bloodhaven. Yeah, and then we just go, and then we just think about Bloodhaven, and then we both just laugh. He's go, bah! <laughs> Bloodhaven, what a bunch of fucking mooks. <laughs> Sorry, Nightwing. <laughs> sure, yeah. I, we, we only gave that to you because, you know, it's... What else are you going to take, you know? Shit, you can't afford to go to Burnside, you know what I mean? Like, remember that money your parents it's put away? It's all getting gentrified now. Have you seen how many Starbucks are popping up over there? Yeah, you, you, you don't want to be there. You, you need to be somewhere where there's real people, like Bruce Springsteen people, you know, and people that rob Bruce Springsteen people, because that's, that's what you get in Bloodhaven. <laughs> but, uh, it's one of those, just the idea of Batman, like, yeah, you know, some of our best thinking is when we were just, like, strutting around naked, you know? <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just freeing. Just, I imagine, like, Batgirl shows up for the first time, just fucking Nightwing, fucking Damien, Alfred, Batman, just fucking thinking in the news. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, when I remove the outfit, it's like I have a third persona. You know what I mean? It's not Bruce Wayne. It's not Batman. It's, it's the naked wing. The bat, something. Naked Batman. Tam. She says, like, look. Bruce, here's the thing. It's not just because you were naked. It's because you willingly made the choice to get naked, put the cowl back on, as well as the boots. So, you know, it's it, it, naked is one thing, but the, you, you chose to put the boots back on. Well, shit, there's sharp rocks in the ground. <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah, it says defeat here, you know what I mean? Good thing Jim Lee always draws these good boots on me. Fuck, some people used to put, like, little, like socks on almost you know what i mean like a little dainty fucking fairy or something like that you know at least i got these combat boots i ain't taking them off for anything you know what i mean and here's the I thing like well, okay guys. you know what what if the joker comes in i mean i know he doesn't care to know who i am but i just don't want him to know you know what i mean it's just one of those things that we keep between us you know shit he might it's not like he's gonna take out you know it's not like he's gonna switch his makeup all you know around you know because sometimes me and him strut around in the nude but he keeps the makeup on you know what i mean and, you think it's weird. He's, he he's, keeps it professional. He, he, you know, he, you know, his skin's white, but he also covers it with white too, as well. It's fucking weird. You know, I, you know, I, I don't really understand it, but he likes to be pure white. I know that sounds fucking racist, but it, it's not. It's just a, it's a clown thing. Clown thing. You know what I mean? Clowns love being white. Don't know what to say about it, but <laughs> it's okay. You know what? We've had some fights before in the nude. You know, it was kind of relaxing. It felt like you know being in like old Roman days. You know what I mean? Doing gymnastics, working out in the nude. You know how it is. Oh, it's really weird. One time, my dad and Bane were sparring, and Bane was fighting the nude, and my dad was in boxers. That's something that's awkward to walk into. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. actually happened in the comics recently. <laughs> you know, but you know, my father's one of those people. He he wouldn't be caught, you know, without his boxes on. I, shit, he took a shower with his Different boxes era. on. <laughs> he's just <laughs> he's buried in his boxers too. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird. Like those boxes were everything to him. <laughs> he's from a different era. He's from the twenties. They called it a shame log. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like his mother sewed his boxers into his own skin. Like some fucking horror movie or some shit like that. <laughs> so, moving forward. <laughs> That's the reason why they have that little hole in the front of the boxes. Everybody always wonders about that. Well, there was a time period where they used to sew the boxers onto you, so that was the only way you could whip it out. <laughs> <laughs> Quite ingenious. No one uses it now. I mean, if you use it now, you're a sick fuck, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, you know what I mean? Shit. Or you're afraid, you know, who knows what you might get caught in with that. But, you know, back then it made total sense. But, uh, yeah, okay, Barbara, well, if you don't want to stay around, that's fine. You don't have to be part of the Bat family. You can do your own thing and, you know, still copyright and fringe on me. But that's okay. Whatever. Get out of here. Go date some girl that works at a tech company in Burnside. Yeah. You know, Hope you're open-minded and shit. Yeah. See, open-minded people like that, or they call themselves open-minded people, don't understand what it's like to strut around the nude and think about ideas. Because they find it offensive. <laughs> I just like to imagine there's people who don't know about the drunk Batman character we have or the cartoons. So this is the first time. You know, I want to hear what they have to say. I, I want to hear what someone has to say about Batman Hush because not a lot of people are talking about it. Like, why the fuck is... <laughs> What's up the fucking voices? No, um... 
So, uh, go, go into this, back to this for a second. A lot of the changes they do make make sense, though, I think. And uh, a lot of the changes they do to the characters make sense. The, the, the thing that about what they ultimately do with uh, Thomas Elliot, because by the end of this, Thomas Elliot is not Hush. Thomas Elliot is a really good guy, and I think that's the thing, because he comes across as a really good, fun guy in the comic, but you know that it does that thing where it's, like, too obvious if he's too nice... And they're like, okay, this guy's going to screw him over at some point, especially some guy who comes out of nowhere, and this villain comes out of nowhere. So I wonder who it could be. And I guess they do, they throw you off the trail a little bit when you think he's dead before you realize, oh, that was Clayface. But out of this, though, it's one of those things where um, they don't make a Thomas Elliot at the end. At the end, it was actually Riddler. And I guess that's kind of a little, because, you know, I like Thomas Elliot as a character. I like him as the opposite Bruce Wayne. I know a lot of people often mention that, oh, well, Joker is opposite of Bruce Wayne because Batman is always dark and grim but saving the day, and Joker's really flamboyant and happy but killing people. And then, you know, there's Cobblepot, a penguin, who was a, goth was a Gotham elite but then went down the wrong side. I don't know, but there's something a little bit more about... Thomas Elliot, which makes it more personal, especially since he was a surgeon and his father was, and Bruce Wayne's father was a surgeon too. Yeah, exactly. But it, it, like, I'll say this: like, I think the Thomas Elliot not being hush, like that part, actually, I was like, you know what? That's kind of fine. That's that's something a little bit different that I think works, and that's okay. You know, like one of those kind of things, like that. I think that like having it be like the Riddler, I don't know. That that was the that was the one part that was kind of weird. I get why they made it the Riddler, just because I could see him... In this Riddler, I mean, it kind of goes back and forth. Riddlers always seem like a big Batman villain to me, but often they make Riddler out to be he's kind of the joke of the Batman rogues gallery. And they really double down on that in this movie. And I, I think that the way they get it, they made, they made his whole scheme go in what he was doing... That all made total sense, both, you know, how he got there, and it's just, like, through a narrative structure, like, oh, well, how we get Riddler off the, off, how we get Batman off the Riddler scent? Well, he managed to get some kind of device in uh, Clayface where he was controlling him, pretending to be him, so it wasn't like he was totally going with it the whole time. So, I thought that was pretty clever, the way they did that. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I think, I think, I mean, like, it's weird. It works. It just kind of, that was like the one thing that sort of threw me off. I feel like maybe the second time I watch it, I'll be like, oh, okay. Because I mean, like, for me, like, I've always been like, the Riddler is actually one of my favorite of like, the, you know, like, I guess you would say the main Batman villains. He's one of the ones I've always liked him a lot. And I know that like in recent years, they've kind of put the Riddler sort of more down, like as a C-list villain. I mean, they even make those jokes in this one and so on. But, like, to me, I always thought that, like, some of, like, the, you know, when I think of, like, some of the Batman the Animated Series episodes and so on, like, whenever it's the Riddler, like, I just, I always like those episodes a lot. Because it's that thing where it's, like, what kind of, like, mind games, what kind of, like, traps and different things are going to be set up. I think it's when people just sort of think of him as, like, a goofy character from almost, like, the 66 show, and he's just got question marks on him and so on. And you don't know that, like, kind of whole, like, different variations of him. I think you could see him as kind of, like, a corny character almost, but, um... But almost in this one kind of worked, like, how it was just, like, you know, I'm trying to strike back and so on like that. And even just kind of, like, because it is that thing, like, I, I didn't really actually think of that being the Riddler at first. Because maybe because, like, my mind, like, no, it's not going to be the Riddler. That's, that, that's the ploy right there. They're going to want you to think it's the Riddler, but it's not going to be the Riddler. And then it turned out to be, oh, it is the Riddler. Well, I think that was, they very much know the audience. They know the audience, because that was, that was uh, some criticism the book originally got, was... Oh, it was so obviously Tommy Elliot. And this, they're making Tommy Elliot so nice and so likable. You're like, of course it's going to be him. <laughs> well, it's like, then, it's like it's nice. It's like, oh, yeah, Bruce, by the way, I cut my parents' brake lines. I was just fucking pissed that day. They went, <laughs> to, bad day. They, they went take me to go see 2001 A Space Odyssey. So I said, fuck, I'm cutting the brake lines. Bruce's parents take him to Zorro, and plus they get killed, and he gets all their money. <laughs> so I couldn't go to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Bullshit. Fuck you. Guess what? You're dead, mom and dad. Well, they later they, 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 later they, on I realized that was a terrible idea and I've been a nice guy ever since. <laughs> you know, some mistakes you just can't take back and you know, it was just a bad night for me. That's all it was. Yeah, you know. If I, I had was. a you see you had an Alfred. I had a Eugene. Eugene was a little bit more of like go for it, Master Elliot. Where Alfred would like Master Bruce don't. I, I think Eugene just always wanted that, you know, he just kind of hated my parents, so anything that I sort of did that pissed them off, it just gave him a smile on his face. 
<laughs> After a while, I became an impressing Eugene. <laughs> yeah. I wish Eugene was here today. Boy, I love that guy. You know what I mean? What was... happened to him? Oh, I killed him. It was another bad day. But, yeah. You know. you know what it is. Just one of those... You know when you have those moments? I think it's the downfall of being a, ni- a real nice guy is that you just get this boiling point that finally once it hits, you just... You know, like the Joker always said, that you have that one bad day. The thing is, I just keep coming back after that bad day. You know? I just bottle it up. And, you know, I'm going to say, like, out of all the days of the year, there's, like, have one day where, like, you know what, i got to go out and kill somebody. And today's the day. And that day it was Eugene. I feel bad about that. I feel bad, you know, because yeah. every one of these things, they're all regrets. You know what I mean? Like, if I could have done it different, I would have. But, you know, live in the moment. <laughs> I would I would, I would have preferred to have been, like, Rosa, the gardener. But, you know, that day was Eugene. Yeah. Rosa's still fucking here. Yeah, Rosa's Just still here. That's, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, not Thomas Elliot. Which makes me wonder, in this Batman Hush one, is Thomas Elliot dead still? In the in the, in the the movie? Because they, like... Well, remember remember when he's going up against the Riddler, how his, how they dug up his corpse? And who knows, maybe this, this could be some shit they come back to in a later movie, which I doubt. But, um, they went to, instead of being Jason Todd's body all dug up to... It, to get across this elaborate scheme that oh is it Jason Todd? They go out to the graveyard and it's Scarecrow is there and they dug up Thomas Elliot's corpse and then when Batman goes to the Ace Chemical plant, so that, that was Ace Chemical. Um, shit always goes down at Ace Chemical and it always blows up. But someone rebuilds it a year later and it still looks like shit. Still looks like no one's been there since 1983. But um, well Bruce is, Bruce is probably like you know what this provides jobs and here's the thing. You know what? We ain't changing the blueprints. You know what I mean? I ain't paying that much for this. Because uh, yeah. I know what's going to happen. It's going to blow up again at some point. It may have not been an Ace Chemical. It, it may have been something else. But um, but it might as well be Ace Chemical at the end of the day. But uh, what ends up happening is, then remember he's going there, and then and like the, the Thomas uh, Elliot's body, body swings. I mean, swings like, down, yeah. And I'm assuming so it's the, dead, but I just kind of wonder, like, is that it? I mean, you know how these comics go. It's like, well, it's also oh, one of those things sleeping. Like, with his eyes open. <laughs> he's just... But no, uh, well, it's also one of those things, I guess, like, there's, there's, I was, it's, I was at some point waiting for some shit to happen. Like, oh, it was Thomas Elliot. But, and this is just like, no, he's just a really nice guy who got the short end of the stick. And he's just dead. And that's something I didn't, he, they really make a victim out of that. And that wasn't something I was expecting. Yeah. And I, I, th- I mean, like, I think it's one of those ones, I think of my second time watching it. I think I'll take that ending and be like, you know what? That's kind of just cool. It's just like an alternate Hush kind of story. Because I feel like it still kind of captures a lot of the magic of Hush. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's got it's got all the big scenes in there. It's got like the one where, you know, Joker's just left out in front of Thomas Elliott's dead body. And Batman's like, you killed the only friend I had back in the day. Well, they also do this whole thing about... Because, like, I don't know. I, I know I said a lot of times it's very obvious that it's Tommy when you read the book. But... I guess I just like him as that character. I like the idea of... I, I just wish Hush just wasn't some other alter ego. I mean, for this particular story and this version they tell of it, it makes sense. But I wish Hush wasn't the wasn't some alternate version of the of uh, Riddler. I wish he was someone else, just because even when they go into later books that Paul Denny wrote about Hush, because there's, there's this real long streak where he wrote a lot of Hush stories. And... Um, you find out that, you know, in Hush, we just realize, we, we, we think, okay, well, Thomas Elliot was some privileged little shit who would always pretend to be good, but deep down, he's like fucking Macaulay Culkin and the good son. He's just, you know, waiting to kill somebody. And then in, in, um, in uh, um, Paul Denny's later books, you find out that, yeah, he's probably a little fucked in the head, but his dad was an alcoholic. He would beat him. And his mother would just let it happen. And then he saw, and he just wished his parents would die. Because they did, they just, you know, he just felt trapped. And, not saying you should kill your parents, but he just felt trapped. And then he saw Bruce Wayne's parents die, and he thought, shit, that, mother, that motherfucker ha- guy has it so easy. Yeah, exactly. The possibilities are endless! And then he got, no, no, so what happened is he hated his dad. He hated Bruce Wayne even more, because his dad saved his mother. Because he's the one that snapped their brake cables. So it was one of those things like, they're always trying, they're always, my dad's always beating me. My mom always just lets it happen, tells me to bottle that shit up. And there's this whole story he tells where 
he did he in order for him to get his inheritance he had to go through the process of going through medical school and this and that and there's this girl he was dating and right at the last minute his mother was cutting him off from his in- inheritance being like a real fucking bitch about it and he says you know what mother i killed dad i did it you know and she's like what and he just like fucking kills his mother right there huh I forgot about that part. I, like, it's been a while since I, I read that that sequel. I one. think that was Heart of Hush. It may yeah. have been something else, but I think it was Heart of Hush. Well, because that's always the thing about Hush too is, is there's only really like a k- couple of books out there using that character, and it's it's one of those ones where it's like, I mean, maybe it's kind of special to keep it sort of like it's like okay, it, it doesn't appear that often, but I always feel like I'd like to see Hush sort of appear in more things. Like, I always think it'd be like, you know, why can't he be in more like even like just stuff like not just necessarily comics, but like animated, or why can't they just throw him in a movie? And it doesn't have to be like exactly the Hush story; just use the Hush character, you know. I am waiting for them to do more with him because he seems to be what he seems to be is there's a story that happens, and he is a big part of that story, and then he fucks off. And then, like, either either he's, like, the main central part of that story, and there's only two or three of those, and then, or then then, there, then there's one where he's a guy who Batman's fighting at the beginning, and he's quickly foiled, you know? It's one of those kind of things. Because I remember that was in, like, one of the all-star uh, Batman stories by Scott Snyder. It opened up with him fighting Hush and being foiled quickly, and Hush had some, um, they needed Hush for information, and then he was out of the story. A lot of the times it's something like that. I remember in Batman War Games, there's a part where Hush came to, like, I think Black Mask, and I think he... No, yeah, he came to Black Mask, and I think he gave him the information of where the Watchtower was. So, like, Oracle Station. So there, there's always these little things he comes in. He'll kick dirt in their eye and then bounce. But he's very rarely ever kind of like this main force which i think he's kind of like a bane in that aspect because for a while bane he had his big story and then he just kind of pop in once in a while but now he's a frequent character especially ever since dark knight rises so maybe we just need to have another hush thing to make him that you know yeah exactly maybe he will kind of come back as time goes on or he'll be used sort of in a different way just you know why not like you know because even other things too it's like even like it was like a batman arkham knight they like they just like hinted to him in that game and he never appeared in there or in like gotham they had like thomas elliott in there as a kid it's like oh this is gonna come around five seasons later there never was a hush well i didn't think he was gonna be all like fucked up and scarred by the end of it but um you know could he could have came back and you could have been like kid hush fighting bruce yeah but I feel like um, I feel like what they would have probably done was um, regarding Hush. I'm I'm just kind of waiting on them to do like I'm trying to think of how many stories he is like the main antagonist. There's Hush. There's Hush Returns. Heart of Hush. I'm sure there's other ones out there. Heart of Hush. And then you know there's side stories where he pops in for a minute, or he's just like I said, he comes in, kicks dirt in their eye, then he fucks off. So I'm sure there's another one out there. I would like, I would love there to be one. And there, there's one where they they tease you, Batman Beyond, when New 52 first happened. You, they thought, is Hush still alive? Is Hush back in town? And then you find out, oh no, it's not Hush. It's a fucked up clone of Dick Grayson with bandages on his face. Yeah, exactly. So it's like there's always those weird things like that and so on. But um, but yeah, you know, it's one of those ones. Like I think overall, I think this Hush movie does work. I, I can see it being like one of those ones where it is gonna throw some people for a loop because there'll be those people out there. You you know what it is? There's always those people that like, like they almost go like the the book is like all life. Like you should never like stray away from the book whatsoever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like I can see that because it's like one of those ones like if you want it to be the exact book and you want to do some kind of like Dark Knight Returns or Batman Year One or one of those kind of stories. I think that's the thing where you'd be like, okay, it's a little, it's almost maybe a little too different. Like, you know, in my opinion, is Hush being one of my favorite books, I think it all kind of works. And I think it's like in a second watch, I think it'll make 10 times more sense and be like, okay, I'll accept that. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, the Riddler thing kind of works. I mean, I almost feel like, I guess in my mind, I was expecting if I'm like, if it's not going to be Thomas Elliott, it'd be cool if it was just something like really random. But I'm like, I know that probably won't be the case. Like Joe Chill or someone like that? Yeah, just something like really like out of left field. That would have been kind of cool because I, don't know, I guess the Riddler kind of felt like I mean I thought that was kind of like the at first like the giveaway like okay you're, they're gonna make you think it's Riddler but it's not and so on and I guess that also means when Thomas Elliot fixes Batman or Bruce Wayne's like head he doesn't put that chip in there of course so he's not able to follow him and figure it all out yeah so it does kind of switch those sort of things around too but 
Well, there's also... Um, it's like your Hush knowledge sort of goes against you in the movie, and I think that's sort of what they want. They want you to be They know their like, audience. Yeah. And I, I think it kind of works in that way, you know? It's like... And even just like the other stuff, too, it's like they keep it kind of simple. It's just like, okay, you got Nightwing there, which is kind of cool. And he's not doing tons of stuff, but he's there for you know, like enough that kind of have him be a part. And they only have Damien only comes on the intercom just to be like literally tell, Dad, I don't want another brother. Make sure you know what you're doing before you go far. Wear a condom and cover your drink. Well, I'll say this. You, I can complain about... Um, don't you, I don't really even... I'm don't not even complaining. Don't you dare give me another brother. Or a sister. Yeah, for shit. I, lo- I like having the whole top floor to myself. Well, it's a, you know, it's a, in my culture where I come from, if I have a sister, that doesn't make a difference, really. <laughs> I'm still heir to the throne, so it all works out that way, but... They, they've, they're not really all that cutting edge in League of Assassins. Um, no, but... Uh, or that forward thinking. Well, it's the um, Middle East, so what do you expect? I mean, shit. They they have a Gatling gun that shoots arrows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like, don't wrong. That's cool. Like, you know, who doesn't like a gun? No, it also works. A machine gun. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, my dad didn't like the invested technology. He said science was the devil. <laughs> he said guns are for pussies, but, you know, he got killed by it, so whatever. <laughs> um, no, but, uh, well, here's another thing about this. That uh, I, I feel like... I feel like a lot of the writing in it is still really good, and they still understand all the characters. And even though I can kind of slightly complain about Hush, I totally get why. I'm not mad they changed it to Riddler in this. I just like Thomas Elliot as as a villain. But at the same time, it makes sense the way the movie goes and the flow of the story. So it's not a matter of like, oh, that was bad. It's just a matter of personal preference. And I still think it works. Even a lot of the shit he's saying. Because the thing about Riddler is it's easy to make him very condescending and just annoying, and especially... In the Arkham video games. He's just so fucking irritating. I think that's the point in the Arkham video games. But at the same time, this right here, I thought that they did a good job of like, okay, this is why Riddler is a threat. Because he even liked the part where he's monologuing off. He's just like, bat, he says like I used an anagram. I used a name, Arthur Wynn or whatever, which is the man who created the crossword puzzle. He's going to narrow that down to this then narrow it down to that. There are 64 warehouses in this area. He will deduce that to 14. He's going to know that from the directory, and he just breaks down all these reasons. Like, he knows Batman that well. I was going to figure it out. And then, you know, he even has some quick little funny one-liners. Like, uh, Catwoman's like, screw you. He says, no time. And the, is the is she's heading towards, like, this, like, metal cruncher thing. Yeah, exactly. I like the claw game, you know. Yeah. No. And out of that... Oh, good. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, no, I, I still think it's like, yeah, the, like the Riddler thing is still really dialed in. And it is one of those ones, like I will say, like, I, I also didn't see that coming. Like when the Riddler was kind of hush, it kind of, at first I was just like, why would Thomas Elliott do the carve like a, like a question mark on his forehead? <laughs> oh, that's the Riddler. Oh, okay. The, the, well, it also gets a point across the Riddler, his own, I mean, not trying to sound overly, you know, the same, say the same thing the movie says, but his only worst enemy is, is himself because he could probably... He really is probably smart enough to get away with this. He just can't help himself, and he always has to leave clues, and he's always looking for recognition. So really, he probably is smart enough to get to get by. He just always fucks himself by leading it to Batman and thinking he can outsmart Batman when he gets there. It's his own ego. And that's the thing about Riddler is over the years, they've turned him more into like a jigsaw or kind of like a, like a cross between jigsaw, kind of an escape artist, and... I think that works for a more modern version of Riddler. And this, he definitely works as a villain. He's never been a favorite villain of mine, but I'm not angry when I see him. Unless it's the Arkham games. Well, yeah, because that's just overkill on how much stuff. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, overall, though, I'm still, like, the Hush movie is one of those ones where it's, like, totally solid. Enjoyed it, you know, just like, you know, pretty much, it's like the gold standard kind of section of, like, the DCU movies, you know what I mean? Maybe not top tier, but, like, still really up there you know what i mean like it's still it's still definitely one of those movies every so often because i mean i guess this is with anything when you have like kind of like a like i feel like when it comes to dc movies the lower end ones is probably just league the fatal five and uh batman gotham knight they get the middle of the ground ones which aren't bad ones but are ones probably like you know death of superman um uh uh i can't remember one like throne of atlantis and then you get to, like, the really high ones, which is, like, Under the Red Hood, Superman, um, um, All- All-Star Superman, you know? I Green, think this Green Lantern, playing... First Flight. Yeah. And I think this is actually kind of right between, like, it, it, right between, like, 
you know, the top tier ones and the middle tier ones. Isn't that kind of like 3.4, se- I mean, 3.5 kind of section? Yeah, that, that's that's what I think, too. It's like one of those ones, like, it's you know, it's, it's not like the ones, like, yeah, it's not like Under the Red Hood or something like that that you... Just like Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, it's not. It's like not one of those, but like it's in like what most of the DCU movies are. I feel like is that standard. Like they're just solid, good movies. You know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. really nothing to complain about. They're all the way through good. You know, you can throw them on at any moment and you totally enjoy it. You know, I definitely think that's right where this one kind of is. You know, and, mm-hmm. I, and it's that kind of weird thing is it's like it's hushed, so it's like I think that also. It'd be interesting to see, like, what somebody thinks of this movie who never read Hush, maybe. You know, there there might be a different perspective on this whole thing. Because I think it's like, you know, you take Hush and you already kind of got your mind set on, like, what Hush is and so on. And then they they Mm kind of change it a little bit. But as I said, like, I don't know, maybe the second watch might even make me like it even more. So I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah. This is definitely one I do plan on getting eventually once I'm near a target or a best buy or something and well you got to see that sergeant rock cartoon though that's that that's that sergeant rock cartoon was where it was at i was like oh my gosh this is amazing this is like literally just as good as the hush movie and it's only 15 minutes long or whatever well that's reason enough right there when I mean, you said when he teams up like nosferatu and frankenstein yeah it's just like and the werewolf it's like sold sold i don't know i don't know what more you need fighting nazis you know what i mean come on but um but yeah, good stuff to be had. Then we get look forward to Wonder Woman. There's probably a bunch of other ones because nowadays it seems like DCU. It's like they they sort of like announce one and then they hide two of them from you. Like the like the Ninja Turtles one. Yeah, like the Ninja Turtles one was sort of hidden in a sense. Like it, it was never announced, never anything like that. So it's like it's kind of weird how that like it's like why, why aren't you guys like they're just like this is coming out in a month. Like what, where the fuck was this thing? Oh, no, no, well, it's like a ninja that's hiding in the shadows. Yeah. Like, really? Well, that's what Nickelodeon told us to say for the press release. So I don't know. Yeah, you know, so, and then there'll be, like, even other ones, too, where they're, like, shoot, like, no advertising whatsoever. Just, like, all of a sudden just appears there, like, that Ray one. But, um, but, yeah, good stuff to be had, but beyond that, go check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, comics, comics like Pizza Boys, Pizza Boys with a Z, issue eight should probably be out by the time this episode is up, maybe, give or take, somewhere around there. I'm so, so, so darn close. It's just the editing phase. But, uh, animation. really good. I really like it. Yeah. So I, I think it's kind of coming together. It's just that thing where, like, when you're editing a comic book, you're just like, I just want to read it one more time, one more time, one more time, just to make mm-hmm. sure, because you know what's going to happen is if you, if you don't, and even if you still do, there's always going to be that, God damn it, how did I not see that, like, the last hundred times I read through there? Yeah, it's going to happen every time so often. But, um, but, yeah, check that out on Comic Central, all that good stuff. But um, we'll leave some links, too, if you want to buy some Batman Hush. Get it on DVD or Blu-ray or get it on, you know digital or whatever whatever way you want to or check it. out the comic or yeah there's a comic there's a lot of hush stuff heart of hush hush of life batman hush of all returns. hush returns yeah hush you know there's you know deep streets Purp- of gotham which has a hush in there for a second there's deep purple's hush it has nothing to do with this hush but you know it's that just, one it's just there but um yeah till then you can I'm imagine s- you can imagine uh uh chris hemsworth dancing with his shirt off with that song yeah exactly there you go that works what wasn't that what movie was that Bad times El Real. Sorry, holding up the podcast. Okay. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, and not Chris. Hem- oh yeah, Chris. Oh yeah, it was Chris Hemsworth. I was thinking of fucking Chris. Chris Pr- I was thinking Chris Pratt for some reason. I'm like Chris Pratt was dancing his shirt off in that movie. I'm like, oh no no, there's too many Chris's this day and age. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, till then I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and I'm Ryan Dunnigan. We'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Sure, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, animation, and a whole lot more. We also have the Old Man Orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff. If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again. We're out of here.